Welcome back, fellas. Uh, it's right some time ago that I made the last farming episode, but today I decided to make some another farming attacks for my next uh, oil upgrade. So, for example, the silo I definitely want to upgrade, and 190,000 of oil are definitely not a little amount. Also, my library has to in my library there has to be done some oh, some researches, um, especially. The warfare chapter, no, not the command chapter, the last one has to be done for a lot of oil, 117,000 I think. And yet recently I watched some other YouTube YouTube videos, some other famous players attacks uh, on YouTube and it's quite an obvious fact and I also already was aware of the fact but I did not have it in mind that close. So when I saw about some attacks I really got reminded to it and uh, I'm talking about our uh, stronghold troops and the age which they are depending on because most players obviously uh, seem to know right now that there are some uh, troop tactics which are pretty much stronger, others are weaker. So for example we have, what are the strongest troops, uh, Retiarius, Re Gladiators are absolutely powerful, then we have um, obviously our powerful, most powerful troops, the Elephant Archers, I don't think there is any any debate about. The Yumi Samurai Army also is very strong in my opinion. Shinobis are not to underestimate. Um, bazookas are quite useful. But what I would definitely want to show you, or what I want to remind all of you also is, if you have some attacks and seeing someone using Elephant Archers, Elephant archers are not the same like all other elephant archers. So if you are seeing some atomic guys attacking and then especially the guys which are paying about uh, so having always um, the most current troop tactics will have stronger ones than other players which probably don't pay or pay less money for the game because they are saving up some troops. So like me for example, you see over here I have very different troop tactics of the same tactic. So pirate army level 5, level 4, level 6, they all look like quite the same. So if there is someone attacking with the level 6 army you won't recognize. If it's level 6, 5, 4, probably 3, 2 or whatever, I don't know how high the levels are going. I think in the atomic age it's almost level 7. But what is the discrepance and the very hard discrepance about all of them is, look at their statistics. Now we are looking at level 4. Level 4 means enlightenment age troops. So you get 15 pirates. I'm making it clear uh, as example at the pirates because I don't have any other troops in such different levels. If I would have the elephant archers I could show it to you um, better, but I don't have. So you get 15 enlightenment age pirates which have 726 hit points and basic damage of 44. If we are now going to the industrial age, you already get 20, 20, so 5 more and they have 811 and 59 hit po um, damage, basic damage. Now let's get to the uh, global age. Here you also get 20, but you have 933, uh, 30, 32 hit points and 64 damage. So if you are comparing them, level 4 and level 6, you see that the level 6 troops are 5 more in numbers and they also have pretty much 50% more about damage and I think about 30 or 25% more hit points. So that's about all armies. So now if you are seeing someone attacking, for example an industrial age player or um, a global age player and using elephant archers, these elephant archers are quite not the same like atomic age guys are using. Um, because I also felt in my attacks that my elephant archers are some kind against, um, in some, in most situations, against um, atomic bases, absolutely they are not useless but not strong enough. They are stucking in barbed wire, getting severe damage even by the silo, getting eaten up by enemy defending troops. So when I'm looking all of these YouTube attacks, where some players are using them and they are all obviously in the atomic age they feel pretty more powerful more movement speed I think that's some kind of um, failure uh, perception of myself but they seem stronger and more durable and that's an obvious fact because they will be because all of the players which are paying for them will have the more, more accurate more not more accurate more current ones of them so they won't have their saved ups 
which they got probably in the Enlightenment age, in the Industrial age, they all will have Atomic age ones. So the most strongest ones instead of like me or probably also other players which have saved them and so which also have some troop tactics from minor ages, from ages before. The uh, true source or the, the essential I wanted to remind you is um, don't generalize every attack. So if you are seeing someone attacking, don't say, oh, okay, he has elephant arches. Now he has to win at this base. It's definitely not in case. Because if it is an industrial player and attacking a global or even an atomic base, even his troop cards will be severely weaker than troop cards from higher ages. So the higher you are, even the stronger your troop cards are. And that is a definitely effect I'm pretty sure about most players will not see. They are only seeing the troop cards which are getting released and thinking of quite all are equal or all are the same. Absolute perfect base. I'm looking for oil, but over here we have quite a lot of resources of every type. Um, where we have the most air defenses? Here we have a lot of towers. Let's start from six o'clock. I have to uh, rise my my medal count again. Obvious fact, I already mentioned it some a couple of times. Uh, when you want to save oil, get higher in medals. Yeah, that's pretty much all about. Well, I think I run pretty much in the barbed wire. Don't lose, come on, don't lose any of the uh, interesting troops. Yeah. Even the quick victory. Okay. Didn't aim for it. Wow, that was absolutely close. The cannon tower nearly shot one of the howitzers. I think we got already through. Even with only uh, three planes. No! Oh, General was triggered. Level 8. Get him, come on. Thanks. So we clean up and then go for another raid. For myself, it's very much the best to don't get the big ones. We have um, at 1,500 medals and above, there are a lot, a lot of very nice bases with 700, 800,000, probably sometimes a million of uh, loot. But again, be patient. Don't get these big bases. Go for lower ones and then do multiple attacks. It will save you tactics. It will save you your planes, your troops, and so in total also crones, because no one likes to get offline with a lot of uh, resources stored. You have to retrain your troops to get your project finished. I also recognized another fact. All of my longer videos, ex no exception in the last videos, all of my longer videos got automatically cut. I don't know why, I recorded about 30 or 40 minutes, especially the last uh, Let's Farm episodes, and they all got cut down to 20 minutes. So I think I will try to keep them shorter. This time again, only 20 minutes of farming. Um, yeah, hopefully they are not getting automatically cut. About the base, I did the last research on the expansion time reduction. So only 14 days and 16 hours now about every forest. So I will save three people, uh, three citizens, people, <laughs> three citizens multiplied by seven days each uh, by each forest. So in total, I will save three citizens by at least um, 28 days. So I think this research already has uh, paid off for me. Um, my generals are really behind. I didn't research them for a lo very long time, despite of the fact that I, I'm really interested to get Churchill higher. But currently, I don't have, I can't get enough oil to do all of these stupid oil, uh, oil upgrades. I will continuously upgrade one tower after another. So when the next people are coming from the university, I will start with the next tower, doing them also to upgrade. 
Um, the garrisons have to wait. I have built my second factory. When the factory is ready, I have to do some more, um, some more uh, experiments to see whether I have. So when I'm now ready with the factory, my question is, um, one of my factories is level four, obviously, and I can produce some bazookas at it. My second question is, when my other factory is only at level one, can I also build over there my bazookas or do I have to upgrade my factory also to the same level to get the same troops available as in my first factory? And I want to prove or want to test this because if I have all the upgrades to do again for my other factory, this will give me a very huge backslash of time. So I will have very lot of less time than I expected because my citizens are getting lost all times for citizens and also a lot of oil otherwise if I don't have to do I will let this factory being very low level level one probably and upgrade the next factory also which will again cost 140,000 only to get the stupid whatever armored cars but I'm not aiming for the armored cars obviously I want to get the factory to level five so that I'm able to get the, it to level six when I'm going to the atomic age in probably one up to two months mm. nice resources but the mortars are very indeed close together I have to circle around the base to get the towers away so that I can attack with my planes to the mortars let's see let's start from 11 o'clock Towers are very nicely spread, nicely for the attacker, not nicely for the defender, because I can nearly, without any danger, take them out one after another. Also the tank depots, now my troops are getting shot. When I got the air defense, as well as the tower over here, I can get for the sniper tower, because it's pretty nasty. So wait, come on, come on, now, get the air defense, nice. So even stronger bases are no problem anymore, especially if the uh, uh, research at the university is done for more plane damage. I really, I really can't await getting more hit points for my planes because this is obviously the last thing I'm needing. They are not durable enough for high, uh, high uh, upgraded towers or for towers with some blessings, coalitions or whatever some global age or even atomic age towers with blessings or coalitions active are absolutely sniping the planes away no matter which global uh, stage they have that's painful The discrepancy of needed oil or oil upgrades you can do from industrial age up to global age is such a huge amount. I'm not pretty sure, probably I'm underestimating or also overestimating, but if you are not especially concerning the generals, because generals are always taking a huge part from the industrial age upwards for all oil upgrades, if you are considering all other buildings, I think in the at industrial age you can do the castle ones for about 100,000 you can research your planes and your bombers for in total let's say 500,000 600,000 I think you can upgrade your factory do some researches for the heavy tank getting your gatlings uh, probably also the bazookas but in total I think you will have some upgrades of about 800 
800, 1 million, approximately slightly over a million. And in the global age, you have again all of the bunkers for 190,000, I think you can get another factory, upgrade the factory, get all of the factory troops in a new way, get your transport even as a new air Uh, air unit so i think in the global age you can spend even with the missile silo two times of about in in total um 200 350 you can get or you can spend without generals now three four and a half million of gold uh, of uh, oil that's absolutely huge and the best best approach is definitely to get all of these upgrades in a row so do some other upgrades meanwhile not try to get a lot of oil uh, upgrades quite after another because even if you are doing some separate uh, gold and food upgrades within so between the oil upgrades you will have problems getting and saving your oil uh, especially for less active players i think it's definitely hard considerably hard to get all of the oil and to save it whoo nice base so let don't get don't get in a too too much hurry we see all of the traps are triggered and they are not that high industrial global age probably mortars are industrial we have a global tank depot all of the others seem to be considerably industrial there are some global defense buildings and i think i should approach from um from down here to get first the castle and the uh, air defenses and then circle right around and now if there are tank depots and there are right in the center of the base circling around is definitely a stupid idea because you are mostly not killing them but triggering four planes are ready that's a perfect condition town center was also empty so let's get the next tower please Then we can get completely outside. Nice. So two mortars already done. Very perfect. My planes have not got any severe damage. If you are a considerably good attacker, I think, and good in timing and anticipating what your troops are doing, by and also by using your planes, you can get very, very huge loot in the multiplayer without a lot of um, effort to do. You can see this loot over here. It's, I think it's absolutely amazing. It's very huge loot. Let's wait until the tank depot is done. I want to get this tank depot. Now it's done. Nice. They can also take the oil and then circle right around again. Get out. Oh, I lost two of my howitzers, I think due to the spike trap. Let's see where we here we have some more towers. Now I'm first getting for the towers, obviously, to make the way completely free so that the uh, planes can without any severe... Oh, come on. Problems. Get to the mortar and to the sniper tower because we have no um, danger more for anymore for them. And we are completely through. There is nothing more to fear in this base. There are definitely stronger bases than this one, but if you have some luck, like over here, you can pretty much without any tactics, without any donated generals, whatever, only with your very core troops, get huge loot. I really like this. 